Hi, I'm Anna Runkel, also known as the Crappy Childhood Fairy. For me, one of the biggest burdens of my past was in my relationship to anger. Because first of all, the adults in my life, when I was a kid, went way out of control with their anger. I grew up watching my dad rage at my mom and my mom berate my dad, and the two of them would smash things and get violent. And even after they were divorced when I was seven, anger and rage became the default way that they communicated about anything. We had a lot of alcoholism in the family, and drunk people make everybody angry, and the angry people make the drunk person angry. I grew up terrified of anger and angry people, and I know a lot of you know exactly what I'm talking about. I remember when I was five or so, I was angry in my own right about something, really angry, and instead of a temper tantrum, I went around the house and I folded a folding chair and laid it on the floor, and I carefully took a vase off the mantel and I put it on the hearth. And that was my way of, you know, like really tearing up the place, very gently, damn it, because I hated violence. I hated the sounds and smells of drunken people. There was no way around it. It just put me on high alert and this weird kind of tension inside. And the sound of breaking glass would just always make my heart race. So in my teens and 20s, I figured I'd solve things by just avoiding angry people. I thought of myself as this very peaceful, loving person. And it's not that I wasn't, but you know what happens. I had a lot of anger and I didn't even know it sometimes. I remember before I ever learned to re-regulate my brain, my emotions were confused. When I acted angry, I was actually hurt. When I was depressed, it was because I was angry. I had BS'd everyone about what I was feeling for so long that I had no idea what I was feeling. And then at 21, I started therapy and I had a place to talk about what had happened. And when I first started, I didn't really have that strong of emotions about my childhood, but boy, the therapist kind of drew it out of me. She thought it was terrible. It was almost to a fault. She wanted me to talk and talk and talk about it. And soon, oh yeah, I had some serious anger going. And the more I talked to her, the angrier I got. And I read some books and I talked to other angry people and soon everywhere I went, everyone I hung out with, I was coming off angry. I was a real drag to hang out with, in fact. And at one point it was me raging and smashing things, which totally upsets me. So I didn't want to do that. I thought I was getting in touch with my feelings, but I was learning to lose control of my feelings and amp them up. And there is nothing healing about that. So here's the thing. Think of your feelings like on this vertical scale. And way down here is death or catatonia or something. And then one notch up is depression. And obviously there are degrees of depression and it's a terrible place to get stuck. And if something you do or some therapy you try helps you go from depression up to anger, that's easy to do. It's actually pretty easy to get somebody angry. And it feels good at first because it gets you off the bottom of depression. When you're hovering at the bottom of the emotional scale, anger and rage are a step in the right direction. But it's a mistake to think that anger is the solution. And I think this idea that feeling your feelings is inherently constructive is just not true. There's a time when we need to get in touch with our feelings and a time to be angry, but if anger isn't transformed pretty quickly into some clarity and some peace and some action, it'll just take you right back down the vertical scale, isolated, depressed, and scary for other people to be around. So what to do with anger? For me, it was the most profound turning point in my life when I was shown how to put it on paper. I put my fears and resentments about life, the tragedies, the injustices, the petty little things that bother my mind, it all went on the paper and then I asked for it to be removed. Now, if you're not a God person and you have a reliable higher self, which I don't, you can release it. You'll be amazed at how much more effective and clear-headed you are with all of that out of your head and released or removed. Now, if you're like I was when I first started doing this daily practice, I worried that if I lost my anger, I'd have no defense against abuse and pressure from other people. And it's been my experience that the opposite is true. When my mind was tangled up with anger and resentment and someone was acting negatively toward me, I'd be paralyzed or confused. I'd start flailing around trying to fix the situation without understanding what was going on. And when I started releasing all that fear and resentment, and there is a technique to this, it's not just journaling, but when I was actually getting free of all that ucky negative thinking, I could see. I knew when I was being attacked and I knew when the disturbance was actually in here. 
I got clarity. And with a clear mind, I'm able to respond appropriately to problems. I can either protect myself or I can get the hell out of there or I can stay and work things out if that's the right thing. Things get worked out now. And when I'm freaked out, I know where to go first and that's to calm the inner disturbance so that I can be clear what I need to do. And most of the time, I don't need to do anything. I just carry on. So if you want to try this technique, it can be calming the first time you do it and it can be life changing if you do it regularly. You'll find a link to the instructions in the description section below. And if you want to go deeper into healing the past and the trauma in it, you might want to check out my online course, Healing Childhood PTSD. There's a link to that as well down in the description section. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again soon. 